I'm Armored Chocobo, and I play video game videos for the internet. And when you see things like this appear on the screen, please take them seriously. I do not want people getting hurt as they watch one of my videos. This is a game that really needs an introduction. Even though I really don't have to introduce the person who made it. This is called The Desolate Hope, made by Scott Cawthon. You know that guy? I don't seem to remember that guy. I remember he did something that was good. I don't, I don't even remember. Oh well. This is a very, very interesting game that I would like to play for you. And I wouldn't be able to record this game unless I used the OBS multi-platform. So this is the maiden voyage of both game and recorder. And it really doesn't have an introduction. It, it kind of cave stories and Lama Lana's at us a bit. If you want explanations, you actually have to read the manual. But maybe there's just a little bit of introduction. You know, how like the mother was speaking to us. A cryptic message. Who is saying this? Who is he saying it to? Is it even a he? It could be a she, for all you know. No explanation. But hey, suddenly coffee pot. Hi, how are you doing today? It's like we ran across a conversation between Mr. Smiley and coffee pot person. Like I said, it cave stories at us a little bit. We don't know what this conversation's about, but I can get a gist of it. No, not right now. We're busy playing a different game. One that we're recording for the internet. Block Puzzler in Space! Hey, that's what uh, La Milana 10 is going to be called. I know this, I'm psychic. Yeah, where is Ted? Aw, oh, there's no Ted to be found in this game. Well, 0 out of 10. Not the game of the year, I'm sorry. Not enough Ted. Nunman Station. There's no need for games, but... Then, why was this fellow installed? That makes no sense to me. Why would they pre-install this on an Nunman Station? In fact, why would they have a coffee pot on an unmanned station? Especially one as rude as this one. Oh well, we could wait on the games then. What's with the mission? We have derelicts on this station. Giant robots. And they're doing something for five years. They've been working on something very important, but it's been taking a little bit longer than expected. So I bet we're going to have to help out with that. They're doing crucial simulations. We're going to be helping him out with a virus that's popped up. Well, he is just a video game program after all. He can't do all this stuff. Why are you asking him to do all this? Ah, so we're going to be doing something else? Video game related, maybe? Okay, now here's the plan. This robot that I'm now going to designate as Coffee is going to use his or her CPU, which happens to be more advanced than a video game, to run all the systems. And then we're going to take the little smiley guy's program, put it into the coffee pot, and he's going to go take care of the derelicts. You know, we could use some music. Did we get some music up in here, or did you scrap that and make it do something else? Like, make your coffee. Sure, that plan doesn't sound like it's going to end in disaster at all. Oh, right, by the way, there's a spider here. His name is Siegfried. Don't mess with him. He'll mess you up, man. So, what kind of dire straits do we have to be that our video game is now our antivirus, and our coffee pot is now our mainframe? Hmm. This is what the, this is what the loading screens involve. Some are longer than others, and I'm going to cut them out. We're now playing as, well, the body of coffee. We're playing as the video game person. Coffee is now preoccupied with being the mainframe for the Lund and Finest space station. No, it's not a ghost. Ridiculous. Learn your programming stuff, how about? They don't have a day or night here, but they do have a day or night cycle. This is very important to the game. During the day, we could enter the simulations and help with the derelicts. We have to find out where this virus is and destroy it. During the night, they're going to be doing something with the simulations, diagnostics, so we can go out and, you know, have a night on the town. I bet there's a great party going on outside. The nightlife is great here on Lunan Finest. Am I even pronouncing that right? I don't even know. We might even be able to find some items so we can make them like us better. 
here I am right now. I really like the environment in this game, the backgrounds and everything else. This is our mission. We don't have any resources. It's like we just started the game or something. Just stop thinking in video game terms. I'm currently a coffee pot. I should be doing coffee pot things. Anybody want coffee in here? Hey, you look funky. What's your deal? Okay, he used the jerk robot. Thanks a lot, jerk robot. I hate you too. I can't even enter a simulation because he doesn't like me. Well, the heck with you, buddy. I'll just do something else in my time. Every room has a derelict in it. They can't leave their rooms anymore because they're kind of beat up and they're too busy working on their simulations. I bet that has caused some major problems. I don't think computers are supposed to be running this long. What are you speaking about this battle stuff? This game has a very interesting battle system that we'll be running into. Remember, helping them helps us. We help them to help us to help them. That's how it works. Hey buddy, what's your deal? You look like Robit Robbie the Robot a little bit. Yeah, he's busy. He doesn't want to let us into his simulation either. Case in point. Can't get into them. No siree. Oh well, see you later buddy. Wonder what's in here. Hey, he ain't looking too good. So... You told me to check out the derelicts, but you didn't tell me about this guy. Explains why you said five. Oh, no, wait, four. So, he broke down. He's not important. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, at least he's working enough to say that he's an error. Don't you hate those? When computers break down and they give you an error message telling you why they broke down. And you can't understand it because it's in computerese. Hello. Hello, miss. I think you're a miss. I'm gonna assume you're a miss. Do robots even have miss? Well, at least she's nice compared to that other person that was not very nice. And the other one was kind of indifferent. So we ran the whole gamut. What's this last guy? He looks like he would be evil and doing evil things. I will talk to the evil robot. Alright, sure. We're best friends with the evil robot. He, he, he loves us. We're, we're the best guy ever. At least we get some funky music when we do the loading thing, so it isn't all that bad. I might still cut it out, especially when it does stuff like that. It makes my window load, and then stops the music. Wait a second. That looks like something familiar. Can't put my wing on it, though. There's, there's something going on here. It's like it's made from some guy that made popular games. These are the simulations. Basically, they're the dream worlds of the derelicts. It's basically like Psychonauts. We jump into their head and help them with stuff. Except they don't have psychological disorders, they have computer logical disorders. I guess since you got to this guy's mind, I guess I could tell you a little bit about the plot. They sent unmanned science vessels. And one of the vessels landed here and became the London Vinus. In Finus. What? Where's a V in there? There was five machines inside, the derelicts. They were made by all different kinds of human scientists. Like Dr. Light and Dr. Wiley. You know, just to name a few. But I guess Earth kind of lost interest. They stopped sending stuff and they stopped talking to the, the space stations. Maybe they accomplished their mission. But since the derelicts aren't done, they're, they're still kind of running and it's been messing with their simulations and their psyche. If is that what you call it, that? But then we have to help them out this mission. And there's a virus eating at them. Wow, this is really terrible. We've been running for an incredibly long time, and there's a virus. So, yeah, you're a video game, aren't you? Uh, let me shorten this to layman's terms. You could shoot things and jump. Because everyone knows that a coffee pot can't jump in the real world. I don't know, have you tried it? To interact with things, we hit down. And of course, to leave a simulation, we hit tab. This is the realm of Malens, or Malens. I'm gonna call him Malens. We gotta talk to him so Coffee could go in and get a hold of his database. It's manipulative, but how else are we gonna find out what his virus is? These guys don't seem like they're the mo most cooperative of sorts. This is what we do, we shoot things. These enemies will drop colorful eggs because Coffee has some kind of addiction with that. This dude's playing Pong. Are you Malins? 
No, it's Boxcar. I'll explain what this is doing later on. It's not really important to our quest right now. But it's very important to what we need to be doing. One thing that bugs me about this game is it's not exactly that optimized. There is going to be some problems in the game, especially when frame rates are involved. This game was released for Windows like back in 2012 and didn't hit Steam until 2014 when the Five Nights at Freddy's thing got off the ground. So this game wasn't exactly on Scott's to-do list in, in matters of optimizing. This guy is Med Med. He has some special items that I cannot afford at all. And what is that thing down there? I can't even reach that thing. All I have is a single jump. I don't even have a double jump. Come on, I'm a video game. I should be able to double jump. Especially inside a simulation. It's not real. None of this is real. Nothing that's real is outside the simulation. That guy, he wasn't real, even though he was really weird looking. In regular Scott style, a lot of these enemies are very, very strange looking. Which is kind of his thing. Which is why it led him to uh, everybody saying that his, his stuff looks like robots and animatronics. Very creepy ones. Ah, there's one of those panels I've seen before. They lead to the subsystem, and there's a fissure in there that's helping with the virus. You can go in there and blow up that fissure. But I'm not really interested in it right now. The platforming sections of this game are much like a Metroidvania. They're kind of non-linear. You can go anywhere you want. You can explore a little bit. But they're not exactly all that big, and there's not a heck of a lot of secrets. Basically, you run around, destroy enemies, collect eggs. Which is exactly what you kind of did in the prequel to this game called The Desolate Room. You played as Coffee, being himself, and he was running around and collecting egg-looking things, because that's kind of his hobby. Come on, robots could have a hobby, too. Looks like this place got really messed up. I wonder where this Malins guy is. Hey, are you Malins? No, you're Explosion. Heck with you. Ah, Malins might be in here. Hmm, some kind of fantasy world. Looks like he closed himself off from the rest of his, uh, his own reality. Yeah, this disturbs me a little bit, and I'm not quite sure why. There's... There's puppet people all over the place. Hello, puppet person. They used to be part of the dark world outside. Then Malins gave them a new life inside of this dome. He has unlimited resources because basically he doesn't have to create anything. He just thinks it, you know? He's kind of a god in his own regard. You see, if technology gets advanced enough, it becomes magic. And he made this town just for these little puppet people. He has a workshop on the edge of town. The thing with Malins is he kind of became a toy maker in this world, and all the townspeople, as you can tell, are some kind of toy. The train that you see passing by is a toy, even the sun is a toy. This virus has been attacking some strange objects. Like trees, rivers, flowers. That doesn't sound like the work of a virus to me. That's a little ridiculous. But every time it got attacked, it's gotten stronger. So the antivirus is definitely not doing its job. Hey, you're not even a puppet person. This is Algo, and he likes quoting Legend of Zelda stuff. But uh, he has some items here. Hmm, what the heck is Charge, anyway? Oh well. I don't really want to buy this all now. I'm really strapped for cash, which are those flying bits that you see me picking up. Malins gave up his work for- gave up some work a while ago. Now he's a master of this world. I wonder what you call this. I know outside is the Malwastes. What do you call in here? Does anybody know the name of their own town? Yeah, thanks for that psychological moment. I feel enlightened. Thank you, puppet person. This is Robo Baby. He has tools that we don't really need right now. Not at all. Thanks, Robo Baby, but no thanks. I can't even afford it anyway. Hey, Melons, how you doing? Yeah, I guess we should talk to him for right now. What is the deal with your place? Welcome to Melonville. This is where real life is for him. It's kind of like the internet, but for robots. I just have drawn that assumption right now. 
He was designed to run simulations for human development. And they might be thousands of light years from Earth, this place. Each of them were designed by a different team of scientists, different simulations, different ideas. Different plans on how to work out how to colonize this place. They were given the most advanced technology. They were able to accommodate unpredictable circumstances. But humans should really know the more intelligence you give them, the more life sucks. It really does suck. Come on, you heard of Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Same idea. He couldn't falsely create anything. He wanted to go literal. He wanted to build it from the ground up quite literally. He had miners making ore. And there's generations of miners. Families of miners. He, he, he processed about hundreds of years of civilization. And he just realized that... What's the point in all this? You know what, maybe we should just give up and make our own things. He thinks the viruses are actually caused by the other derelicts. If they would just stop what they're doing and let me get on with my life, then the virus would just disappear. But it might be in the underground tunnel. So, maybe we should go and check that out. Hey, coffee, I'm walking here, hello. Uh, yeah, the dialogue boxes kind of stop you in your tracks. Yeah, that's great. So we need to power ourselves up before we go and take on any viruses. There's many ways we could do that. We could save up money, which are chips. We could also save up our power eggs. You can see I have a great many of those. I think the red ones are health, blue ones are defense, green ones are speed, and yellow ones are attack. So I have a great many attack right now. And of course, the friendly pieces of code like Robo Baby I'm standing in front of. He's going to also unlock the Virus Combat Simulator. We could practice on a practice dummy. And also, he's talked to the other derelicts and, uh, you know, lets us go get on with our adventure in other places. We could also check out the, the, you know, the control systems, how we're doing, how's everybody else is doing. Kind of vital to the game when we get near the end. But that's it for the Desolate Hope for right now. Welcome to Malinville. They got virus problems. And also, I think Malin's is going a little crazy. Just saying. Good night, folks.